the Jeep has made it finally. Right, it's got finally after an eventful day yesterday. And if you did not see yesterday's video, I essentially almost died because the lug nuts were not properly torqued on the front driver's side of the Jeep. And yes, I test drove it and it drove fine. They must have, I'm guessing these wheels were probably like something new that they got off Facebook Marketplace that's like a newer style rim. They just thought it'd look good and sell the Jeep faster. And somebody did not properly torque the front driver's side. They might not be properly torqued at all, all the way around, but because it drove totally fine, then it just started to wobble, 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 you know, like the song goes. And then the whole tire just came flying off and the studs actually, they said that they didn't break. They just kind of like fell back into the hub assembly like they just kind of like fell back in behind the rotor there they did get the wheel at least on temporarily and what they did was they took one lug nut off of the other three wheels just to be able to thread this on because obviously my lug nuts disappeared at the scene currently the thing is not in a drivable worthy state it was yesterday but they said that i might want to check the oil level and redo the oil pan first thing if I'm gonna run it at all, just because the oil pan apparently does now have a big gash in it. But what we're gonna do is go over everything that was damaged, and then we're gonna actually start to work on some of this stuff today. Because of course this thing was supposed to be just road ready to drive around right away, but it's currently not. And this is the 4.0 inline six. This is the one that I wanted to go with for a Jeep. If I was gonna get an older Jeep, I wanted this motor in the Jeep, that's what I wanted, just because I hear a lot of good things about them. They apparently have a lot of small, uh, little quirky things that just kind of go wrong with like wiring and other little sensors and crap. But other than that, for the most part, from everything that I've heard, I don't know anything about them other than my grandpa's always said they're super good engines. Everybody in the comments that's ever men made comments about Jeeps in the older ones specifically, that these are great engines for them. Now, not everybody loves this particular year and style of Jeep. I'm not gonna go freaking rock crawling. I'm not gonna do anything like that extreme type stuff. Most of mine is just gonna be literally goofing off around trails in the woods, in the mud, in some water, stuff like that. And I could really care less if the thing doesn't last forever anyways. But I just wanted to have an engine in it that could take at least somewhat of a decent amount of abuse uh, before it dies so we can try to get some uh, good content out of it. So the first thing we're gonna do is jack this thing up on the passenger side because according to the shop, they sent me a bunch of photos and they charged me $45 to look the thing over and they had already looked it over by the time I'd called them this morning. They said that it's got a hole in the oil pan it's got a smashed transmission line or two, and it's gonna need new lug nuts. It's gonna need new oil, of course, with the oil pan. So, I mean, it needs a lot of simple stuff. Oil pan apparently can be a pain, but apparently it's not that bad, as long as you can get it up on jack stands and stuff and you know what you're doing. I don't, so this should be fun. We're gonna get that jacked up, get it on stand, and I'm gonna try to get this thing road ready today. So my goal is by 5 p.m. this thing is ready to start up and drive because I got to go on a trip here and I don't need to take this far but I was going to take this over to my dad's which is about 15 miles and then park it there and then basically from that point on I go with him out to Pennsylvania to do some flintlock deer hunting. But before we tear into it, check out the interior on this thing. I mean it's nasty. Mud and grass on the floorboard but like there's no rips in the seats. Perforated leather. I don't know if it's supposed to be heated or not. I'm guessing not. I mean, this stuff is like nice. Everything's in freaking amazing shape. Power. That works. Power windows and everything. It's pretty awesome. I mean, back seat. These are gas cans because it was empty on fuel. Ashtrays that were used regularly. And a little bit of grass on the seat. But otherwise, the seats are so freaking nice, dude. This thing is awesome. I tell my brother, I'm like, this thing is like perfect. If you can like toss a deer in the trunk, toss a bunch of firewood in there, like just use it as like a property work vehicle, it'd be freaking awesome. Cause it's so narrow. I mean, to be honest, how much bigger is it really though compared to like the player stranger dad had? It's probably like four feet longer, but not really any higher, maybe a little bit wider. A little bit wider, a little bit longer. And this has heat, hopefully. <laughs> yeah, yeah, hopefully. And the other thing is too, guys, I want to know from you guys on stock suspension, I might replace the shocks just because they're freaking ancient. But other than replacing the shocks on this thing, um, I'm probably not going to do anything suspension wise. But I do want to know what's the biggest freaking tire I can cram under this thing. I think these are 28 inch tires right now. I looked up the sizing on them, 28 inch tires. What's the biggest tire 
you could fit on the stock rim and cram under this thing. What's the biggest size you could fit under this thing with no front fenders on each side? That's what I want to know. If you look up in there, look at the hole in the oil pan. Oh my gosh. Oh, that's bad. If I can at least get that out, then everything's ready to just throw it back up in there. I'll have my oil picked up and everything, and hopefully I can just dump it in, let it run, and I'm good to go. And I'm gonna see if I can get all this done in under five hours. We'll see what happens. So looking at this now, and here's the thing, guys. I'm using this as a trail vehicle. I'm going to run through the mud. Cat's chasing after the chickens. I'm gonna run it through the mud. I'm gonna run it on trails. I'm gonna just, I'm gonna screw the thing up anyway. So. They actually, at the shop, they didn't charge me anything to do this, um, and I'm glad they didn't, but they basically took the studs that had fallen back in there and then put them back out to where you could thread onto them. And I thought the studs were gonna be like completely trashed, and maybe I should still replace them. But if you look, if you look all the lug nuts completely thread on all the way, and there's actually no hesitation. Like that, I'm actually kind of, a, I'm kind of amazed by that because they completely thread on and off all the studs, no problem. So I'm actually kind of now second guessing whether I should even replace the entire, you know, hub assembly, new studs, new rotor, new caliper, new pads, because everything works. And what else I've been looking at, if you look at the, if you look at the uh, rotor, I don't know if this is supposed to be touching your ear or not. I feel like that's not supposed to be touching there. Uh, but anyways, if you look at the rotor, it's actually not that bad. It's got a flat spot right here. And again, I get that. It's probably obviously a better idea to replace if you're gonna make it a road vehicle. But like, it's actually still smooth down the side. It's not like bailed out from like, you know what I'm saying, from like hitting the ground and sliding. It's actually not that bad. It's got a little flat spot, but the rotor itself is not in awful shape and I bet you it would still stop the car just fine in terms of like when you're on and off trails and stuff like that if you need it to slow down because of course this is the only one that was affected and again I know there's gonna be people in the comments like oh don't half butt do it you know replace all the stuff but guys it's a trail vehicle if I decide I want to drive this thing actually for some reason that's one thing but other than that it's something to throw on my car hauler and just take it to a property and unload it and just run it around in the mud and in the trails that's all it's gonna be for so I just don't think it's necessary to dump $300 into parts to redo the hub assembly, the brake pads, the caliper, you know, all the stuff if I'm literally going to trash the thing over the next couple weeks. We got the oil pan out after about two and a half hours of trying to finagle it. What I ended up doing is taking off the four bolts holding that bracket there. I took off this one nut and pin, cotter pin holding that there to the steering. And then I basically dropped the axle as low as it would go and I kind of twisted the pan towards the passenger side and yanked it back little by little and it rattled out. The whole time what I was trying to do is just trying to take it straight down and out like towards the transmission. It was just not working. Well, after I've learned a lesson over the last few hours on how to remove the oil pan from one of these Cherokees. We have to run to AutoZone real quick. I'm gonna grab a new oil pan. I'm gonna grab oil and um, what else do I need? I was gonna grab a rotor and pads and all that stuff, but I think I'm gonna wait on that because I don't need that to drive it right now for what I'm gonna do with it, as I've mentioned before. All I really need is a new oil pan that'll hold oil all the way up to level, and then I'm going to need new oil, and I'm gonna put the new pan in, fill it up with oil, throw the bolts and everything back on and just back it out of the shop and be done with it for today. If I want to go back and do the hub assembly, it's not very hard to do. It doesn't have anything to do with the oil pan anyway. All it'd be is taking off the wheel and then disassembling that one side. But well, let's go get the oil pan, get this thing slapped back in, and hopefully within this next hour or two, this thing is up and running. Oh my goodness. New paint match bumper for the Jeep. I've been out here since 10 a.m. and it's almost eight o'clock now. I just finished it. I replaced the oil pan and it took a lot of time learning how to do this because keep in mind I've never owned a Jeep, not one Jeep. I've actually never owned a small SUV like this. That was a fun day trying to figure everything out. So I'm rushing. I just ran to the house, grabbed the camera, ran back. I didn't film a lot of the reassembly. But I was going to show you guys the old oil pan. See that hole right there? I mean it was a big, it was a big slice and for the most part it really didn't leak that much oil even when it was parked in the shop here, didn't leak that much oil. And then 
when I drained the oil, like the proper amount of oil just about came out of there. Not entirely, but just about. It might have been a quart low. Um, but so for the most part, it really didn't leak that bad, but everything's back together. I put, I had all kinds of stuff apart. I don't even know if I showed you how much I ripped apart on this thing, but I had a lot ripped apart. Everything's back on. The studs are actually totally fine. I just bought new lug nuts. We're all good to go. I'm going to start this thing up and hopefully just fires right up. I got the garage cracked right there by the tailpipe. Let's see if it fires up. Ooh. That's weird. I don't understand. I have no idea. This thing, when I went to test drive it, fired right up, drove great until the tire came off. Like it'll fire up, but then it'll just die. See what I'm doing? See what it's doing? Honestly, people, I cannot tell you why it's not starting. If you guys have any suggestions, please let me know down in the comment section below. I thought I fixed everything. Turns out it's either still something wrong with it or there was something wrong with it occasionally when you would start it up that i didn't know about maybe they had it somewhat fixed just for when i test drove it i don't know but i've got to go now i've spent my entire day fiddling around with this thing and it's just um fun lots of fun but anyways guys hopefully you enjoyed the video that i did get uh if you did please smash that thumbs up and don't forget that if you want to enter to win our silver 24 valve that we're getting all new paint on new suspension new wheels and tires new bumper a whole bunch of new stuff if you want to enter to win that truck plus five thousand dollars cash i think it's your last um, yeah Okay, yeah, it is your last day for 20 times entries to win that truck plus the five grand and the limited drop that's on the store right now. So if you wanna shop those products and you wanna get that deal, it's your last day, get it while you can. Anyways, guys, thank you so much. I'll catch you in the next video. Peace.